Well, hello everybody. Mari Graceberg here, host of the Teach and Profit Summit. And here with me is Susan Epstein. Um, we're going to be talking about masterminds. Love this topic. Susan is a master at this one. So what um, we're going to have fun uh, dissecting this uh, mastermind thing and how to create, build, ma uh, how to create, run, manage, and all those intricacies about masterminds. But first off, Susan, welcome to the stage. Thank you for having me. Very, um, very excited about our, our chat today. I am excited too, and I'm sure our listeners are as well. So Susan, let's start with you sharing your background story. I love your story, but I'm sure our audience wants to know that too. So share with them how did you get started and what led you to doing what you're doing today? So years ago, um, I was a clinical social worker and a psychotherapist. And I had a private practice for many years. One thing that I used to do a lot is create groups in my practice. I would see people with similar um, themes, you know, like uh, women who were getting divorced or something like that. And I would just create, oh, I can see them all at the same time and save time and, and give people support. So I would start, and I did, built a lot of groups over the years. So that was always kind of my go-to anyway in creating leverage in my business. Wow. So that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then later, um, in the early 2000s, um, the whole um, psychotherapy practice in the United States changed um, with managed care and um, insurance. And so where you used to be able to say, this is what I'm going to make per hour, in order to participate with insurance panels, they told you what you could charge. So it's kind of like all of a sudden you're working for yourself and then you're working for an insurance company. You don't really, it's not really your business anymore lots of rules and regulations as well. So I ended up having to work twice as many hours to make the same money because they cut the allowable rates. And I was working, um, probably seeing 30 clients a week, which for 45 to 50 minutes each is a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of listening. And it's all in person, obviously, because that's the way before the internet, right? <laughs> so that's what we did. And I heard a friend of mine was a life coach and um, I, you know, asked her, you know, what is that? Like, I was just, this is like, so to me, it was like, I think it was probably 99 or 2000. Like, what is this? And um, she told me about it and I hired her for three months and um, had like my first life coaching experience. And I got all this stuff done in my life. <laughs> like, just like done. Like I took my kids on vacation, planned this huge family vacation, bought the rug I'd been putting off for buying for 10 years, you know, just like funny things like, uh, and uh, this is a really good way to work, um, working with people who are creative, resourceful, and whole, working with people who proactively want to take action and helping them get to that stuff, right? So that was my first taste of it. And then um, years later, not even years, but a couple of years later, I um, decided how can I merge my therapy practice and my coaching practice? And I thought, well, since I'm a family therapist and a play therapist, why not be a parenting coach? So I built a parenting coach business on online, parentingpowers.com. And that was kind of my baby for a really, really long time. And I went around the country um, training other professionals on how to work with explosive and resistant kids. And so between that and the parent coaching, it was, you know, it was my, it was my business. And then um, the, the, I think the, the clincher or the thing that really propelled me into doing what I'm doing now is people started finding me, other therapists and other coaches, and saying, how did you get out of therapy? <laughs> how did you get out? And, ha and how did you build an online business? So then people were hiring me to help them build their businesses. And I had the opportunity to work um, for a very uh, well-known um, coach, Christian Michelson, for a number of years as a business coach on his team, and then became the lead um, of all his coaches, and there's 22 coaches, um, on his team right now and gave me all that experience in really doing business coaching 24 seven. So a year ago, I decided to put the parenting on hold, um, except for training people to be parent coaches, um, but not doing any more direct service with families and really build a business on, um, helping coaches, therapists, and healers have a real and profitable business. Because what I saw over the past 10 years was a ton of people getting into coaching and maybe signing up a client or maybe two, but never hitting the six figures and then buying more programs 
and more programs and more programs to try to hit the six figures but, and going into major debt. And it really disturbed me to see my friends and colleagues do this, you know, sort of like the shiny object syndrome to think that, you know, I'm going to go to this live event, I'm going to drink the Kool-Aid, I'm going to think I can have this business, but have no idea what they're doing. So I had an idea um, that what if I offered a program, a mastermind program, where I brought experts who were very different. I mean, some of them could be therapists, coaches, healers, authors, speakers, just different experts in the industry, and teach them how to start group coaching programs and masterminds within the, within the mastermind that I had. And so a year ago, I started offering that program. And by May, I had about 30 people in the program. And then by November, I had already enrolled over 70 people. And what ended up happening was there were people in that program who wanted more attention from me. So I offered um, a step up, a high-end mastermind group. And now I have 10 people in that group. And that's a higher price point. Um, that people are paying to have more attention, more time, um, a couple of um, actual live events with me during the year where we'll, you know, mastermind in a small group in person. So those were, that's kind of what happened. And, and it happened very quickly, very organically. Um, I let the group collaborate with me in the beginning, called it a pilot, um, asked them to tell me more, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What's helpful? And you know, yes, yay for my success, but the real success is the people that have come through my programs that now have businesses that are real and profitable. That's for me. If I wasn't doing that, I would have gotten out because I want to, you know, definitely deliver a program that, that uh, gives results and helps people and not just collects their money like the programs that they bought in the past. So everything I do is pretty high touch. Um, they get a lot of attention from me and I'm committed to their success.